This encounter escalated remarkably quickly, with the officers beginning to handcuff Mr. Edger as he was attempting to provide an explanation of his actions, which is required by Alabama's Stop and Identify statute, and ultimately arresting him for not handing over his driver's license, which is not required by Alabama's Stop and Identify statute. Body cam footage of the incident. Good. How are y'all doing? How are you doing? What are y'all doing? I'm just like a description. Huh? What are y'all doing? Get in the car. Is this your car? Here's where you drive all day. Uh, one, one, one of your customers? One of your customers? Don't tell. Yeah. I was over here earlier. Whose car is that? That's mine. The black one? Yeah. Hold it. All right, take a break from me real fast, and y'all have driver's license or IDs on you? I ain't gonna submit to no ID. Listen, you call this lady right now. Listen, I ain't got time for this. You can worry. I don't mean to be rude or nothing. Okay, no, you, I don't mean you to do need to give me your ID or driver's license. Listen, I don't want you to run run me in and it, uh, for, for nothing. Are you refusing me to give? Are you refusing I'm, to give me your ID I'm or driver's you, license? I'm telling you, you call this lady. On this Step car. over that one. Come on, man. See y'all. See here's y'all playing. You're playing right now. We, we, we don't got time for this. We really don't got time for this. Officer McCabe demands that Mr. Edger provide his driver's license, and when he refuses, Officer Cameron Paralat handcuffs him. Man, y'all don't understand. You don't understand the law. I do. I do. I got three officers. Three officers. Three officers. Y'all know. Turn it the other way. Y'all crush my right, my left arm up there, man. I'm here to my left one. I asked you, sir. Okay. You're under arrest for obstruction. I didn't do nothing. All right. So if you resist any further, you will also get charged with resisting arrest. Do you understand? Listen, I give my ID. I'll tell you what's going on. This is ridiculous. Here's why it's ridiculous that the police arrested him for obstruction of justice. As the Supreme Court explained in the 1991 case of Florida versus Bostick, even when officers have no basis for suspecting a particular individual of criminal activity, they can ask questions of that individual and even request the individual's identification. Even if they have no reason to suspect someone's committed a crime, officers may request a person's identification so long as quote, as long as the police do not convey a message that compliance with their requests is required. However, as the Supreme Court noted in the 1983 case of Florida versus Royer, quote, the person approached need not answer any question put to him. Indeed, he may decline to listen to the questions at all and may go on his way. He may not be detained even momentarily without reasonable objective grounds for doing so. But there's more. Alabama's Stop and Identify statute does not require citizens to provide physical identification, which is the only thing, the only thing that the officers requested from Mr. Edger before arresting him. Accordingly, it is highly unlikely that a court would determine that the officers had probable cause, or even arguable probable cause, to arrest Mr. Edger for obstruction or any other offense. Therefore, in this case, it is highly likely that a court would conclude that because the officers did not have probable cause to arrest Mr. Edger, their search of his person also violated the Fourth Amendment. Mr. Edger later filed a false arrest lawsuit against the two officers and the city of Huntsville. Here's how the district court ruled. District court granted the officers qualified immunity and dismissed Mr. Edger's complaint. reasoning that the officers had arguable probable cause to make the arrest because a reasonable but mistaken officer could have believed that Mr. Edger's refusal to provide physical identification was a crime. Mr. Edger appealed to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. Here's what the Court of Appeals concluded. The Court of Appeals reversed the district court's decision, determining that Officer McCabe and Officer Paralat were not entitled, not entitled to qualified immunity. The appeals court ruled that the officers weren't entitled to qualified immunity for this reason. 
quote, it has been clearly established for decades prior to Mr. Edger's arrest that the police are free to ask questions and the public is free to ignore them. And the state statute itself in this case is clear and requires no additional construction. Police are empowered to demand from an individual three things, name, address, and an explanation of his actions. Under this set of facts and these precedents, no reasonable officer could have believed there was probable cause to arrest Mr. Edger for obstructing governmental operations. The Court of Appeals remanded the case to the District Court to move forward with the case. And as of the date of writing this episode, the lawsuit is still pending. Which leads us to this. Ridiculous, man. You know what I'm saying? She, 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 hey, look, at, I didn't do the crime, but she's trying to arrest somebody for not doing a crime. She's trying to arrest me for obstruction. For what? I didn't do anything.